Hey everyone, Chris Hansen tonight from New York City, and you are having a seat with me tonight. We continue our investigation into the Davi Vanity case. Jesus Torres, frontman of Blood on the Dance Floor, accused of dozens and dozens of sexual assaults, grooming of underage girls over a 10-year period. The authorities are investigating, survivors have spoken out, and now people in the music industry are demanding justice as well. It is our pleasure tonight to have as our guests Insane Clown Posse, Violent J and Shaggy to Dope, joining us tonight from the Detroit area. Mal Levy, a survivor and victims coordinator, is also going to join us tonight. Let's jump right in with Violent J and Shaggy to Dope. Guys, thanks for being hey. here. All right. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah, it's an honor. Super total, honor. Total, utter honor to be here i mean it really is we're huge fans yeah no and, doubt. and uh this is this is we, we think it's unbelievably awesome what you're doing you know you're the reason we we became hip to this you know what i mean right. we did we didn't know um we we learned of this through you you know Chris well, Hansen, got, you're I've, the got man so us. Many, I've got so many questions and you guys are, are, are the men to me for what you do your creativity and and you know kind of the way you guys have evolved not only as musicians but talented guys who are socially conscious and trying to do a lot of great things right now. You came out just the other day, and I have so many questions, I don't even know where to start. I've been doing this for 40 years, but I'm very excited to have you guys here. You called Davi Vanity, Jesus Torres, Juggalo Enemy Number One. How did he get on your radar, and why did you decide to speak out in a way that has created so much attention to this? Well, I mean, um, he came on our radar, through your show, yeah, you know, I, honestly, uh, we want, you know, I, I, I you know, the, the old show to catch a predator. That's my all-time favorite show, you know, of all time. You know, I, I, I still go back and watch it all the time. And I remember the funny thing was, I, my son, I believe, was thirteen at the time. He's fifteen now, and um, and I said, Bud, I want to show you this really cool show. Come here. And I, I've loaded it up on YouTube, and he's like, oh, Chris Hansen, did I have to catch a predator? I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you already know this? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, hell yeah, you know. But um, we made a song called To Catch a Predator. <laughs> I was listening to it as, in the warm-up for the show. It's very, very yeah. Hard. It's quite I, and Of course, that was inspired by you, you know? Well, I, so, yeah, uh, we, we, um, you know, we, 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 we're huge fans. I mean, we, we follow your career. We, you know, we just uh, really admire you. And um, But what... What it was about this particular guy, this particular investigation, is, of course, it hit so close to home for us because technically this guy, is he does the exact same thing for a living we do. Yeah, right. right. You know, which right. Is, by itself is a, is a rare um, profession. I mean, it's not like everybody does this. You know, it's a, it's a rare job. It's a, not, I don't know rare, whatever the word is. It's a unique job, you know. So this guy is doing exactly – what we do and, and um to the point where you know we have clown paint on and um and we have certain things that people would call our gimmick sort of that's what we call it you know it's our gimmick you know right. um and, and and davi vanity and you know the, his gimmick would be the the crazy hair the wigs you know and all that yeah you know at, trying to act crazy on stage and, and you know that's his like that's his gimmick you know what I mean? A lot of bands say, hey, you know, we don't have a gimmick. You know, we're just what we are. Well, that's their gimmick, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Right. No, like I, totally, you... I totally get it. Was he somebody you knew in the music industry? I mean, I... I no. Was no. Was he on your missed, radar no. at all? Wait, what you got to understand is this, man. It, it's it's like our whole career, we, we've been totally against any kind of... Uh, uh, pedophiling or touching children loudly speaking about it our whole career in our music in our music right not just like outspoken about it like in interviews but in in songs in our music you know it, it goes back to the beginning of our music career and um you know so obviously when we found out about davi davi uh the pedophile boy you know what i'm saying we we couldn't just sit there and not say nothing it was you know it's just like come on man he's doing what we're doing and i can't con understand the concept of molesting kids at all. It doesn't even enter my mind, <laughs> you know? But yeah, he's doing what we're doing, 
but taking advantage of his situation and, and, and getting with these little little girls. You know, it's he's, crazy. he's literally, it's literally insane. He was literally on tour molesting right. kids yeah. on a molestation tour. And it makes you, know? you think, did, did he get into this career so he could tour and, and, and molesting? You know what I'm saying? Is that why he got into it? Well, you I know, guess you that's, ask that's the question here because, again, we've been yeah. digging around at this for weeks and weeks now, and we've had you know more than a dozen – survivor victims on we've had other uh, members of the music community on performers artists and it would appear that based on the merch based upon the lyrics that davi vanity was trying to appeal to a very vulnerable set of young women to whom he spoke in a way that resonated and then he was able to manipulate to coax to groom to prey upon these young women in a way that satisfied his violent sexual urges. Now, you know something, Chris, I I, I wholeheartedly agree. When, when I learned about him, I mean, I remember back in the day, you know, 10 years ago when, when they were, you know, probably at their height, I remember hearing the name Blood on the Dance Yeah, I've definitely heard of it Several before. times because we're, we're huge Michael Jackson fans. So yep. every time I heard Blood on the Dance Floor, you know, it, I would take note, I, I, oh, that's a band, okay, you know. Um, but that was it. I don't know, couldn't have told you anything about them at all. But, right, but they had they had some famous tours, and and you know Mal will talk to that in in, in a minute. But they had Warp tour. They had other, yeah. you know, a New Year's Day toured with them. Fell on Vendetta. Yeah. I mean, people who are known within the industry, you know. So it wasn't like yeah, they, they, they were nobodies. They they had a they following. Were gonna, yeah, oh, sure, sure. Yeah. They, they were gonna uh, go out with Combi Christ. Uh, they were gonna support Combi Christ. And they, they Tommy like, Christ threw him off the nope. tour. <laughs> yeah, they were like, "You can't deal with that, 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 all the allegations. We don't want anything to do with that." Yeah, but, but to um, what you were talking about, the, it appears almost like he created the entire band for the purpose, right, for the sole purpose of molesting young girls. And, and when people talk about how his music, even though they deny it for some re reason, but he. Obviously, in their lyrics, it was almost directed at children. You know, the, the songs are about school, you know, or issues like that, you know, uh, dodging the parentals and, you know, these lyrics he uses, you know. But I got to say, and I hate in every way to sound like I'm defending him, but I have to say that may not be the case because for us, there are, to this day, sometimes we – we put out music that would sound like it was directed toward kids, but that's because for us, those were, those are pivotal ages in your life. Those are when you're literally leaving adolescence and for the first time in your life, you know, you're not just following mom and dad and doing as you're told, but you're actually making decisions on your own for the first time. Davi Vanity has come out in different areas and said, hey, look, none of this was targeted towards kids, underage girls. Uh, you know, when I asked uh, the audience to sh take down their tops or do this or do that, that, you know, I was intending that for adult female members. Now, that's different. That's different. Live okay. in concert is totally yeah. different. I saw the music itself. I was going to say, my point was going to be evil villain, thinking as an evil villain, I don't think Dobby Vanity is that brilliant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. In other words, I don't think he's smart enough to, to make music and know how to direct it toward a younger audience and then it actually work. I just don't buy it. I think he was just I think, he was a part of a scene that catered to that. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah, I think he that, was that whole scene here, the the what was, what was the scene, the, yeah. Yeah, the core. The the crunk core and all that, you know what I'm saying? It is it all caters towards younger people. I think he was in love it's just so rebellious, yeah, you know, and their right. parents hate it. So it makes kids eat it up even more. You know, we, we've been down that road. Yeah, basically, like crazy. basically what we're trying to say is we don't believe that he created Blood on the Dance Floor as a tool to attract young women. For the simple fact, because he's not smart enough. He's not smart enough to actually right. pull something like that off. Um, but I think he just got into the music during a time when the scene was happening. And that whole movement caters toward young young children. You know what I mean? One, and, of, it, yes, uh, you know, one of his... Uh, victims, targets, uh, was known back in the day as Jesse Slaughter, now Damian Leonhardt. Yeah. And this mm -hmm. became a big thing. You guys probably followed it. Mal can talk about it later. We had uh, 
Damien on this show talking about it, but she was literally 10 years old when he first talked yeah. to her. And there's a big falling hey. out, a big social media thing. And then he writes a diss track. Right, he, right. He's on Goof, right. making fun of the whole thing. Who does that? Who, who what does kind that? of opponent? Who, 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 exactly. Who does that? Not mentally and, stable people do that. And, and nobody pointed that out better than you, Chris, right. because because I'm watching one of your episodes, and you said, who targets a 10-year-old girl in a diss song? And, and you're like, who the hell does that? You know what I'm saying? It's it Obviously, it screams that she meant a lot more to him than just somebody who made up a lie. Because if it didn't, he wouldn't even have thought about making a song. You, you know when people diss us on daily, we're like, why would you make a retaliation song? All that does is make them... Yo, up them, you if, know? if a ten-year-old girl came out with an allegation about one of us like that, or both of us, and um, and it caught fire the way hers did, um, ten, you know, ten years ago or whatever that was, um, we would still ignore it because it's so utterly ridiculous. But behind the scenes, I'd be doing everything I could to clear my name, knowing yeah, I didn't course. do it. You know, I would think, but I, I, I would ever address it because. A ten-year-old girl—that's just ludicrous. Yeah, that's. It's that's, not even worth addressing. It's so I, ridiculous. I don't understand how a grown man makes a diss track about a, a kid. It's mind-boggling. <laughs> you know? It's absolutely mind-boggling. But you right, know, it's this, like, I can't this is exactly it. what happened on this deal. But here's right. one of my questions for you guys: And you've been out there on the road performing for thirty years, right? Popular yeah, guys. Yeah. I mean, big audiences. You know, collaborations with everybody from Slash to Snoop Dogg, and, and you guys are a big deal in your own right. You have groupies. Uh, yeah. The Juggalos, obviously, it's, it's, they're, they're, they're very, very loyal. But when you have concerts, you draw in people who are very excited. Um, they want to be a part of this. Have you had groupies where you've had to say, uh, All the time. But, but not, not, not like... Okay, for one thing in the in the you juggle world I'm, you is, see what I'm saying. You know, not necessarily yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. along the way no, no. you had to have yeah. some people throw themselves at you. I just want to say I just want to say for the record that the juggle world itself is is extremely unique. It's very different. There, there's rules and um things that people look up and down to each other about and uh, juggalettes, you know, a lot of juggalettes don't even like that term. They like to, we're juggalos too, you know. But anyway, a lot of the girls in the juggalo scene, they don't, they're not groupies. They don't, they don't go that route. You know what I mean? It's just not, it's not a thing dissed upon, but it's not something popular in the juggalo world. Like, you know, the, the whole acting of like a groupie and sleeping with the artists and things, it's just not something that gets you any points in the juggalo world. But throughout our adventures in life, you know, touring and just off the name ICP and, and people coming to see the show that aren't, you know, "Quote unquote juggalos," you know what I mean? P people that are just, oh, I want to see this band. I heard they're crazy, you know. Um, we've came across what I assume are legendary groupies. I mean, girls that are almost pros at being groupies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they, they know exactly how to make the moves to get where they need to go. You know, we we definitely had our experiences with, with groupies like that. You know, but uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, but, we, yeah. oh yeah, we we do like meet and greets every show and stuff, but of course. You got younger people coming in because we also do all ages shows, you know, uh, and not always, but most of our shows are, are all ages. So you do get like extremely young girls coming to meet and greets that do do say things to you that isn't appropriate for a, a young girl that age to be saying. But in no way, shape or form do you act on that. You know, say, I don't have no urge to act on that. It's a, it's a little girl. You know, I, so I, I don't. See, <laughs> especially when there's so many fine ass girls Look, their age there's, out there. No, you know what I mean, Davi, da, Davi Berry could probably have got many, many attractive like chicks his age. No well, question, he, he, he was did. a rock star, he right? Did. But he just got to touch the forbidden fruit. That's the thing. People, some people want their minds want what they can't. You know, maybe they're so feeling so proud of their success that they're thinking, I can do anything, have anything I want. Oh, this is forbidden? Not for me, you know? Right. And somehow something might become attractive to them that under normal circumstances they wouldn't even want. But because other people are telling them you can't, it makes them want to do it. Right. It's sort of like 
and, and I'm not saying he's successful at, at this rate, but it's sort of like a billionaire boys club where they, you know, the bank owners and, you know, they don't have nothing to do. So they, the root, the word is, you know, they, there's sex trading going on and crazy stuff, you know, a Jeffrey Epstein yeah, Jeffrey style. Epstein's and it's, right. and it's like, I believe that really happens because these people are so powerful that they want what is not allowed to them. You know what I mean? What, you know, but whatever the circumstance is, it, it's it's so hard to comprehend because because my our brains don't work like that at all. I I've never in my life seen like a young girl like that and be like, ooh yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right. They look like children. I mean, th these girls that they you show they you know you see pictures with him that came out you know came out later on when they were little girls and it happened to them. They were so young looking. There's no way you can mistake any of these girls. For being over 18, not what, a chance. What responsibility does somebody in the entertainment world like you guys, Jay and Shaggy, have to, you know, balance between the rock star lifestyle and not you know, there, there's, over that line? Now, I get that's a big line when it comes to Davi Vanity. I get it. But, but yeah. in your lives, I mean, look, you've been doing this 30 years. There's a difference between Jay and you know, shaggy today and maybe 20 years ago. Oh, no different question, all yeah. of our lives 20 years ago. I get that. But what a responsibility do guys in your business have to, you know, keep it clean? You know, we don't have a lot of responsibility as far as this business goes at all. You know, we're pretty free to say what, at least us, we're pretty free to say whatever we want to say. We don't have a record label restricting us or nothing like that or censoring us. But I mean, that's just common knowledge. I mean, normal people don't even have that urge, you know, <laughs> and whatever got into him to get that. And yeah, it, we do have a responsibility for for younger fans now that we're older to, to set examples. I mean, you've got kids, bit, you know? And, and you know? Yeah, I, I got, yeah, I got, I got kids, right? He has two kids, right? Yeah, yeah, I got five. Yeah, and I no, got absolutely. a seventeen-year-old daughter right now and a three-year-old okay. daughter. I couldn't right, imagine. Right in the bed. You know this. If this guy would have, my kids would have came or came out, I'd be hunting that guy right now, trying to murder him. You know, straight up. I, I'm not gonna lie. Now, now, there's a certain. I think in all, I think in all levels. Now, for example, if you're if you're a blue collar worker and you work at a factory and you catch a DUI on a weekend, right? Um, they put your um, picture in the paper and everything in that city, and um, there it is, no big deal, you know. But if you're a celebrity, you know what I'm saying, and uh, you catch a DUI. Your punishment obviously is is much stronger because that that picture going in the paper is, can be extremely embarrassing to you, can hurt your career, all kinds of things like that, right? Well, then again, these are the what we call bones. These are the bones about being a public figure. Yeah. You know, there's, you got a lot of eyes watching you. That's why you shouldn't be doing that shit. You get caught doing dumb shit, it's gonna blow up all over the you, place. You you shouldn't be doing DUIs because you got people watching you. Some people looking up to you. So. You know, as the guy coming home from the factory, doing a, you know, he basically puts people's lives in danger in his own. But, you know, for, for somebody who's, quote, unquote, a celebrity of some sort, for them to do it, it's even dumber. Because, you know, they're the, they're the ones supposed to be setting an example. You know, so so I get why the punishment is, I think it all levels out. I get why it's harder. You know, we have certain responsibilities just as having more ears hearing what we're saying than most people. We should take that accountable and watch what we say realizing things a lot more people hearing us out than the regular person you know so yeah you gotta be look try to try to be a little smarter the way you conduct yourself when but you, you know being kids out. from the streets it's right. hard it's not always easy <laughs> no, I, I understand I'm, I'm really when i say keep it clean i don't mean speaking out or you know having fun or being colorful i'm talking about in your you know relationships with people on the road for instance i'll give you an example fallon vendetta reached out last night and said, I hear you're having the guys on. You can quote me on this by saying I was on their tour bus. They were absolute gentlemen, could not have been more pleasant and could not have created a more comfortable atmosphere for a young woman to be on the bus. You know, and that was unsolicited. This was somebody in the entertainment world who was, you know, well known in that area who felt compelled because she had been on the show to reach out to me in a text and tell me that, that you should feel comfortable having them on the show because this, she gets nothing out of this. 
Yeah, it, it, you know. I mean, that's a compliment to you guys, is what I'm saying. It's it, it's an enormous it's an enormous compliment, you know. Yeah. Now, you um, may or may not remember that one night on the road, out of so many nights on the road that you had on the tour bus, but it stuck out in her mind because of the way you guys acted, in spite of your on stage persona and and. Well, what, what we call what we we call it because a lot of people do have girls on their bus, even like you know normally you no know, not underage girls, but just girls in general. A lot of people have girls on their bus. Everybody gets a little tipsy and a little grabby sometimes. We call that gorilla pimping. You know what I'm saying? If you're forcing yourself on a girl, we call it gorilla pimping. We don't, and, we don't, and we we don't, don't, don't believe pimping. in gorilla pimping. So if we find out anybody on our team, anybody that's on the road with us is gorilla pimping, you're they, out. Got, they got to go, man. They got to we, we don't instantly. We don't gone. We don't condone uh, deadbeat dads either. You know, if you got a kid and you're not taking care of your kid and, you, and you're just out here wilding, you know, you're not working for us. You know what I mean? We, we might, some people say, we might push that a little too far, but, but we like to, you know, you get to karma off the people you surround yourself with. You know what I mean? We like to have good people around us. You know, we like to have good, 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 uh, most, mostly men that work for us. We like to have good men around us. You know what I mean? And, and, and not a bunch of deadbeat dads or bums or people out there, you know, reaching up a girl's shirt when she keeps saying no. And we, and we have fired people for that before. Well, that, that, was my, that was my next question. Have you had somebody on the crew on oh, the yeah. team who misbehaved, who got fresh, handsy, touchy, out of line? You yep. said, look, dude, you're gone. At the instant we find out about it, they're out. We don't even give – there's no second chances, none of that. You're gone. Because, I mean – and I tell you, it, it, it's not their name is going to be on the, in the paper. It's ICP right. cut, grope somebody. You know what I'm saying? And we don't need that on our, on our record. You know what I'm saying? Forget that. No, man, you're out of there. No, we, we don't deal with that. I don't think I don't think this makes me in my opinion, this doesn't make me a bad person, even though others might disagree. If I meet a if I'm if I go out after a show and I meet a girl at a bar and we're talking to the talking, having drinks at the bar, and um it's time to go home, you know, the bar's closing and she, and, and I'm going back to the bus. Oh, okay. And she, you know, if she wants to go back to the bus, I will straight up let her know. I will say, listen, I've had a great time. I want to hope that we keep talking and hanging out every time I come through town or maybe you come out on the road with us sometime. But I want you to know if you come back to the bus, you know, my intentions are I'm thinking we're probably going to be hooking up. You know what I mean? And, and, and I just want you to know that's going through my mind if you come back to the bus. That doesn't mean you have to, but, you know, that's what I'm thinking. So if you're not – comfortable with that we should probably just end the night here you know what i'm saying like i'll, I'll break it down and let you lay it, lay it out you know and, and i'm just way more comfortable doing that because i don't ever 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 want to try to trick or use trickery or 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 um lies or you know i don't want to fast end up anything, right i don't want to end up scoring right unless it was because i made a sweet ass move not because i use trickery and bullshit. I don't want to talk my way into that. I want her to want it as bad as I do. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know what does, I mean? It does. But here's, here's what I want to do. I want to bring in Mal Levy, who you guys met uh, at the beginning of the show, just for a minute. She was targeted by Davi Vanity in a way that clearly is unacceptable. Mal, meet the guys. I think hey you're guys. very familiar with each other. Yeah. Hey, hey. And, and there was a situation where Davi, by all accounts, drugged Mal in order to take advantage. Mal, tell that story briefly to the guys, and then I want you guys to interact with Mal for a second on that. Sure. Um, so my story, um, I know for a refresher for anyone in here, also just want a quick shout out to you know all the new audience, all the juggalos in here. Love you all, so thanks for coming in. Um, so my story... Um, I knew Davi when I was 14 to 15 is when I think I met him. I was 15 probably at the time of the assault. Um, I went up to Orlando to hang out with him, and he was just my platonic friend at the time, um, even though he had been sexually suggestive, suggestive over the phone before, which I was very young and I didn't really understand what he was saying, but um, nevertheless, he gave me a drink, and I didn't even finish it. And back then, I was you know a typical teenager who drank a lot, and one drink is not going to hit me, um, but it did. And last, you know, next thing I know, I'm being shoved down on my, you know, knees, and he's very aggressively, you know, getting taking advantage of me on in all counts sexually, um, which was horrible. And 
I knew at the time that I was not into it and I didn't like it. And I didn't want it. I had no interest in him. I was never even physically attracted to this guy. Um, but it happened and it was, it was disgusting. Um, because, and, and the amount of girls that this, a similar instance, a similar occurrence happened to is, I mean, it's, it's shocking. It's not surprising, but it's shocking in the number at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And we know uh, this, it, it, that story. Go ahead, guys. And that's just like straight up his MO. Like anybody that's came out and said the same thing, grabs him by the hair, shoves him down. You know, it's like yeah. just that many girls that don't know each other or have spoke together, come with the same story and they're all lying. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's whole, insane to think like that, you know, that whole. Well, that there's whole, nothing to gain from it. He's like, so right, exactly. ridiculously like, irrelevant. You're not gonna, like, why would right, he, and you he, can't he, sue him and get money because he's broke now. He lives with his mom, you know. Hey, exactly. Now, now, let me ask you this. Why is it so important for guys like uh, Jay and Shaggy to speak out in such a public way on something like this? And, and as somebody who's been coordinating the survivors and getting them to go to law enforcement in order to get justice here. What do you want to see come out of this very whole high profile show tonight? That's ex that's what I was going to bring up next. I know a lot of people are um, wondering, you know, why is ICP talking on this? You know, they have nothing to do with it, whatever. Well, I'm going to answer that question right now. So um, for everybody wondering why, um, so the second that um, I believe it was uh, Violent J who posted it, um, as soon as ICP posted the Dobby thing the other night, I immediately was ecstatic. I was freaking out. Um, I texted I texted Chris and let him know um, because number one, I'm, I mean, I love ICP, but also, um, oh my gosh, this is a, you know, a huge, you know, band. This is a huge, this is a huge platform that brings so much more awareness and a completely different audience. And they're gonna know about this. And you know, I was amazed how many girls came forward from that post, both on Facebook wow. and Instagram. Yeah, I was going to tell you guys. So uh, we people came forward. Um, one of the many has, you know, filed a report. Uh, but yes, yeah, several people in the comments on your Instagram and Facebook, several were assaulted in some way. And it was like people that I had never spoken to before. And I was overwhelmed that next day. Like I couldn't get off of my phone. And I was like, that's amazing. So I feel like, you know, guys like you who have this huge, amazing, like family level audience, which I love, like you guys having that, you know, ability to spread so much awareness is so important. And I hope that it inspires other artists to do the same thing because, you know, Ashley Lilly and I were talking about, you know, contacting a couple of bands who have since agreed to make a post because of this. And it's so like, we so appreciate it. Um, the only thing I do want to say, and I'm speaking on behalf of myself and Ashley with this and probably a couple others, we don't want him to get beaten down. <laughs> we want him very much alive. Um, if you well, here goes the thing. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for cutting you out, but here goes the no, thing. Like, I wouldn't even give him the respect to sock him. I just slap the shit out of him <laughs> as hard <laughs> as I could. It might knock him out, but I just <laughs> slap it. I wouldn't even just, close just fist him. I'd, oh, I'd slap him. I get just you. to clarify, guys, you know, you, you asked for uh, – Juggalos to to make you know Davi Vanity Juggalo enemy number one. Now we we're not asking people to become violent or harass or dox or anything or to become vigilantes. But what when you put out something like this to your extremely loyal following, what is it that you really want them to do? Uh, I you know. I might lose lose some <laughs> some respect here, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, I'm, but there's I'm no, a, there, hey, we don't front to I'm, nobody. I'm, 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 I'm holding on. I'm we don't sugarcoat on. nothing, man. I'm gonna be honest here, you know what I mean? What the hell is going on? What is what is going on right now? It's ten years? Ten years? This guy has been walking for ten years doing it. I mean, and got arrested like three times. For more than ten years, that you know, what I'm saying people before got, was, got arrested and let off like three times now. And yeah. when, when then? And he's still actively doing it, doing it well, right now. Well, I, I like think, it, like, what? Man. I think what's like what's when changed? do we get yeah. to say? Let's get him and take him down. Like when is well, it okay? Well, here's the thing: he's actively thing. hurting people. No, trust me, I agree. Like, if I could whoop his ass myself, I, I, I probably would. But, you know, here's the thing. Like, when it comes down to severely injuring the guy and stuff like that, um, which I hope nobody does, 
Um, we definitely want him to go to jail and have to be there for the rest of his life and have to just, you know, be in there wigless and lame as shit and then made somebody's bitch. So basically, um, for the first time ever, it's under FBI investigation, finally. And that is why it's different now. Um, beforehand, you know, he has gone to jail. He's been arrested. Um, several girls have filed reports or tried to, and law enforcement failed them terribly back in the day, which is why, awful. Why is this happening? What, so why is this? Oh, law, law enforcement keeps failing. Well, well now they are, though. It's a combination of things, and, and Mel knows this, and, and I know because I've talked to people in law enforcement, and, you know, we deal with a lot of these cases sometimes that come up through the, you know, the, the digital world, and once they get a larger following, suddenly there's just more attention and more victims come forward. Ty Burns, who was on last week, who had an incredibly compelling story and was incredibly courageous and brave to come forward, had never gone to law enforcement because she didn't think anything was going to come out of it. Now she's in contact with Mal mm -hmm. and yeah. that information is going into, you know, where it needs it, to be with, with the I mean, FBI and, and local law enforcement. I mean, from? all you got to do is look at the footage. Look at the footage you posted. Right yeah. here, you know, uh, of her when she was 14 or something at yeah. his concert. Oh, yeah. She was 14. a little girl, man. Yeah. She was yeah. a little girl. This dude was in his mid-20s. Here's a question like, for you guys, though. Is this, is the Davi Vanity case an aberration, or is there a bigger problem in the music industry with guys who are taking advantage of underage girls? I, I don't see that. I, I don't see that. Yeah, I mean, I did, did, as far as I know, it, it don't, we don't. We really don't hang out with a lot of bands like that. Number one, just in general, and, and um, we handpick people we tour with and stuff. So, I mean, if there's any rumors about some? Of course, we're not going to do that. But yeah, I, I mean, personally, I've never seen it. Never ever. We we had a we had a guy we had a guy working for us who before before we um. Before we met him, I guess he had a um, uh, a sexual assault charge. Something, yeah, something. yeah. Anyway, that was like one of the first With things. That was one of the first things we asked him. You know, like, well, what's up with this? You know, and he was like, you know, oh man, I, you know, he said told some story. I don't remember what it was, but he was like, you know, I was seventeen, she was sixteen. You know, the the age limit was sixteen, something like along those lines. I, I broke up with her. Her mom pressed charges on me, sent me to jail. You know, okay. Now, here's the thing. I remember being that age, and I remember circumstances like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's so confusing when you're that young, and suddenly you wake up one day, and you're a, a new age where you're not allowed to, you know, talk to her no more, as you were yesterday. You, you know, it's just a strange thing that, like, when you're that age, okay, uh, how you could be 18 and a girl could be 16 and she could be against the law. Only in this state. But over here, it's fine. You know, it's just a very kind of blurry, weird situation, right? But I remember homies in the street disappearing like they're falling through trap doors. Mm -hmm. You know, like what happened to him? Oh man, he got put away for statutory. You didn't yeah. hear about that? Statutory, it was like statutory. Why? Right. Like you would get out of jail and go back for statutory for the same girl. These are the these are, would be their girlfriends. These you know? these were not pedophiles or rapists, these are just people that didn't understand how serious it was. You know they what I mean? They were 18 and their girlfriend was 16. They, you know? they, may have, they may have turned 18, then all of a sudden their girlfriend is illegal, and they're, I'm still going out with I don't care. Next that thing was, you know, they break up. That was you not know, the case with Dobby Vanity, though. This was no, hell no, hell no. Hell no. It couldn't well, be any more different. Right. But, but um, um, what I'm saying is, so we had a guy that was working for us, and um, that was his story. So for a lot of the time, we gave him the benefit of the doubt, you know? But a lot of the juggles weren't having it. And, and part of his story, you know, because he went to prison for so long, this is what won me over uh, 100% with his story that he was telling us, was uh, he, he had said he went to prison for like six to eight years or something like that. And um, I was just like, well, I mean, I mean, you went to prison, so what's up? He was like, man, I was so scared. I was about to do like 40 years plus that I just ca I copped the deal, man, just because I didn't know if I was going to get – found innocent or guilty. I didn't want to take a chance of going to jail for 35 years or whatever. And I could like feel that because I've been in situations in court where I had to plead no contest to, to avoid jail time, which is basically saying you're guilty, but you're not guilty or whatever, you know? 
but uh, but you are guilty, basically. So I understood that being in a position where you're looking at serious time and you got to cop a plea to get out of it, you know? But a lot of juggalos were like, man, what's up with that, you know, uh, sexual assault victim or predator guy working for you guys? And one day Shaggy said, you know, why take a chance? What if he really, what if he really did it? And, and why are we risking that? Yeah, that's a good point. You know what I'm saying? I was like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, let, let, why even take a chance? You know, up, we're done with it, them. Yeah. it came up today in the in the ramp up to to doing this show with you guys, and you know, and you got to filter this stuff because you know, depending on what day and who's talking, you're either the greatest hero in the world or you're the you know the lowest villain. And I go through it, you guys go through it, Mel goes, everybody goes through it as a public figure, and it. it a couple of people were chirping about that today, so I'm glad you addressed it because, uh, you know, it it it's it speaks to the social consciousness that you guys have developed, and, and I want to talk about that a little bit. Thirty years you've been at this. Did you ever think, yeah. first of all, you'd be you'd have this kind of a run in this very well, competitive aggressive? We, we no no we we didn't we didn't know that it's going to turn into. We didn't even know there was going to be Juggalos. Or no, we didn't name Juggalos. We had no idea. We just wanted to be rappers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, 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 we knew we were going to be huge. We knew that right, because, you know. Yeah, yeah. We didn't. We didn't. We never. Uh, you know, the Juggalo, the the uh, very unique, very wonderful, and unbelievably awesome sort of subculture that Juggalos are. That was never in the blueprints. That 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 it just happened you know? naturally. We we're, we're, we're extremely. I don't even have the words to describe how fortunate we are that that happened to us, you know, because they're, they're the most supportive, wonderful fans you can have. If, if fans even, you know, I, I, and I know every band says, oh, our fans, we're, we're family, you know. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. Everybody because says that, we, we, we're but, because of you guys, you know. You know, in thinking about that, I'd like to see another band who actually qualifies as family with their fans as much as Juggalos are, you know, because they you, really. Why do, you, why do you think that is, guys? I, I, I think I know, I know why that is. Well, well, tell me why. It's because it's a very loyal fan base. There's no question. I think it, I think it's because um, you know, if you're listening to this music and you pick up things on it that you like, you hear things that you relate to. I think it, it takes a unique type of person, and I think you might be the only person in your in your whole job that that is into this and every, other people think it literally sucks, you know? And, um, but when you get together at that first concert and you're out front with a line of other people, just like you who love it too, which means many things. It means you find the same things humorous. You find the same things entertaining. You find the same things cool. You know, it's, it tells a lot about you. So suddenly you realize you're not alone. You're not an outcast. You got all these people that are just like you. You just haven't. You just don't know them, and it makes you feel extremely close to them. So uh, it started at a concert. People started coming early just to line up and hang out. Yeah, and and now fun. everybody knows in the juggalo world that ICP is not the magic to 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 the juggalo world. The juggalo world is the magic. You know what I'm saying? Like we're just the soundtrack. Like where what's happening term, in the juggalo? Where, where did the term juggalo come from? We don't know. We can only speculate. We didn't make it up. I mean, I, Juggalos I did some made it up. Research here. I couldn't find it anywhere. Because yeah. because you never will. Because we don't even know. Don't we know. we speculate. It made it came from like lyrics saying juggler or or you know the juggler like a juggler. You we know? have a song on our first album called the Juggler, right? And and just the way we just flip nonsense words like juggle, lugger, local row, and stuff like that. So we think that people just picked up on that and just. But this is all organic. Yeah. That became its own. People started calling themselves juggalos, and 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 the um, rules ain't the word, but the whole way the juggalo world works, like the love, the camaraderie. You know, like a lot of times reporters are are like, "Well, my homies dared me to go to the gathering, so pray for me because I hear if, if you're not one of them, they'll they'll kick your ass." And then the reporters find out it's the exact opposite. Right. Everybody's so welcoming and wonderful that they're like, man, you know what I mean? Like, this is the greatest weekend ever. I've never had so much love from strangers. It's not like, hey, man, are you just bumping into me? You know, you're not going to see that in like, the juggalo world. Do you need a water here? Get some. It's yeah. not going to be anything like that. There's not going to be any fights in the crowd. And when there is a fight, it's usually somebody there 
that works there that hates juggalos and is talking shit. Or the vendors. But you'll never see you'll never see fights between juggalos. How many juggalos are there? There's, that's a, that's a, who knows. Yeah, Infinite that's a hard knows. question. You know, I, I would say that would I would say sorry to cut cut you off. Um, he's just purely speculating on this. Yeah, too, I, I, I oh, can't I even. It. Yeah, I would say that there's about you know maybe maybe fifteen thousand that are diehard collectors, and the re the reason I come out with that number is because if we were to say hey, there's only 20,000 of these, 15 will go right away. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like, that's why I believe, like, the number 15 is, I use that as, like, for diehard collectors. But, you know, my favorite band is Pearl Jam, okay? I've loved Pearl Jam my whole life. I'm not even in the fan club. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about the guys. You know what I mean? I couldn't tell you the whole band's name, but they're my favorite band. So there's a lot of... Fans like that, that, that you know, that, that may, maybe like the music or whatever, but they're just not into, you know, our social media. And there, and there also is, there are fans who who follow everything we do and everything, but just can't afford, can't to afford buy it. Nothing. Can't afford it, you know, you know. So there's no real way to, to um, there's no, there's yeah, no there's real no, way you to. You can't gauge it, really. But you like, recently, uh, guys, may I hold that thought for just one second? You recently canceled the annual juggalo gathering yeah COVID-19 COVID pandemic how hard of a decision was that for you guys very very we, easy. we've done 20 of them in a row 20 years we've been doing 20 it 20 years so in a row 20 years the last year was the 20th annual gathering of the juggalos in 2019. um it was it, it was a hard decision but i mean we no it, it was hard. it's impossible to do it otherwise we would have tried at least it was hard to actually come out and announce it that was the biggest problem was announcing because it. so many people didn't want it to be but the answer presented itself right you know i mean it's, it's, for ob it's dead obvious why we canceled the gathering and just like everybody else had to cancel our tour and everything you know and it's rescheduled for october but who knows if shit, stuff's gonna be open by october it's, it's, it seems like sometimes people give us credit for doing things that anybody else would. I just think they think, sometimes I think people think, man, those guys are really dumb. Oh, they finally did something cool. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But like anybody in our shoes, I mean, do you want 15,000 people camping you know, together like during the see, pandemic? You know, you do see, you know, groups of people in Michigan and Texas. Yeah, and, I just see all I just around seen, I was, you know, gathering together. And it, 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 you know, kids, young people are doing this, especially thinking they're invincible and nothing's going to happen. And if you said oh, we're going to do it, short of the governor or law enforcement saying you cannot, people would show up. You oh know, yeah, no, 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 was, you took it. You took a hit on this by calling it off, clearly. But you did it. I, I was just on the west coast of Michigan uh, over the weekend, and I was just like, "Did nobody get the memo for COVID nineteen out here?" So like, nobody was wearing masks. I went to like a snack bar that also had, like a restaurant on the other side, so you could see the kitchen through the snack bar window. None of the staff was wearing masks. And I was just like, isn't that illegal or something? I thought you had to wear one if you're handling people's food. and you know. So it's, it's amazing how many people don't care about it and think it's fake and all that. You know, It's like, why would you take the chance and, and do that? You know, It's like Russian roulette to me. You know? So you can just put a mask on and have no chance or you know, just stay away from crowds, no chance, or just carry on with your life like normal. And Take a chance at catching that, you know. Say, why would you do that? There, there's know. mini gatherings happening. Juggalos are organizing their own mini gatherings among, like, they're and their friends, like meeting at a campground or something. In fact, I'm I plan to go to one, you know. Um, but they're not um large numbers of people, you know. What I'm saying they're like groups of up to up to like fifty, uh, up to like fifteen, or, or up to I'd say maybe thirty. The ones I've heard about anyway. But it's Mal, just I, friends that still want to be together, you know. Mal, I cut you off earlier. Go ahead. I'm sorry, what? I cut you off earlier. <laughs> I'm apologizing. Oh, I was just sorry. I was just I was just wondering how magnets work. Sorry. Um <laughs> anyway. <laughs> sorry, I had to had to do that. I got I got them for days. Um that was pretty much it. That's a um, reference to a song. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, everybody knows that. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, so anyways, um so you were saying, I mean, now obviously you're involved in music and touring and management of, of 
tour is uh, it had to be tough for these guys to to call that off. And I guess the question is, you know, for the future, the near term, do you try to do virtual stuff? Do you try to put up a screen? Do you go to a drive-in theater? What do you what do you do? I have a lot of friends that are doing like um, these virtual festival things right now and like drive-in festival shows and whatnot. Um, I mean, I think that's what's going to be going on in early 2021. But I think that the rest of 2021 is probably going to go back to normal. I mean, I have a couple friends tours that are have been rescheduled like four times already. So that mm -hmm. sucks a lot. I was supposed to go back on tour this spring and I had to I mean those tours are canceled. So no, it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, you know, it, it sucks. I, I, I hate that it had to be because of this pandemic, but if you erase all that unprecedented amount of negativity, if you erase all that and just look at the fact that we were forced to take a year off, for that, I have no complaints. Because <laughs> we've been going 30 yeah, we've years. Been going you know? hard, man. And it's not just a gathering that's our annual events. We have the Halloween clown show every Halloween. Big we have a total weekend Christmas. somewhere every weekend, you know. Uh, I mean, somewhere one weekend a year. We've got, you know, our Christmas party, you know. And and, and then we tour in between. And we tour three times a year. And, and try to we, record music. And we record, there. you know. Right. So it's like, it, 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 it's been nice to have being forced to take a year off. You know? It's like a big well, yeah, and, and, and we're not really taking it off, but from the road at least. Yeah, know? we would have never made that call on our own. You know, we'd have went to the wheels fall off, you know. So it was it's nice to be able to um say, Oh, well we can't <laughs> like you know However, I mean and I know it was horrible for so so many people, like financially, mentally, everything that when everybody's uh, a lockdown a quarantine. But um, for my situation, I thought it was great. I got to connect with my family super hard again, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I'm a gone a lot, you know what I'm saying? So just having three and a half just solid months sitting with them, you know what I'm saying? To right. me, it, it was great. You know, it, it was awesome, you know. But, you know, yeah, but I mean, that's that was, you know, it's time to get back to work and get back to normal, though, you know. So what is next for ICP, guys? What's the plan? Um, You know, we got we got a lot of things coming up. A whole whole bunch of things that we're, that we're getting ready to announce right along the lines of, of what we were just talking about, which is like, uh, you know, doing like a, a stream thing sort of thing. We've got a month, a month long stream thing coming up that, that we're going to be on live four nights a week yeah, in August uh, doing something different each night, you know, because I'm um, um, not to cut you off. But but like you guys were saying, it's, it's like that's just what what it is right now. Everything's o o virtual and o over the Internet, you know. That's the only way you can do stuff right now. So that's obviously why we're doing it too. You know, what I'm saying? We, we've got we've got a lot of a lot of cool stuff coming up. But I but I re, I'd rather not get into all that because I know there's a lot of people watching that, that, that don't. You know, we're one of the most advice. hated. We're we're, we're we're one of the, one of the most hated bands in the world. You know, if you, if you're not into us now, you're like, what is this about? You know. But my question for everybody watching, everybody watching, and, and you guys, you know, what. And I know it might not have been the, the smartest thing to do is put a tweet out and say, "You know, Juggalos, you know what to do. Pick up something heavy and issue a beatdown, you know. That may not have been the, the smartest way to, to do it. But my question is, what do we do when there's a active, unconvicted, real human being monster, hunchback, dragging a foot, wings, horns, all of that? Walking around in public right now, right now, that we all know about. We, we all know about it. And he's just out here. What do you do? You just going to actually let him walk by you? Well, this creature from hell? It's just gonna I, walk by you. Oh, no. Not by what, what do you do? And, and Mal can speak. Mal can speak to this, and I'm gonna let her right now. He's still out there contacting underage women. Mal. That's what I'm saying. He's continuously right. hurting people's children. Like, well, here's, he's here's, like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I totally get what you're saying because I feel you. Like, I want to snatch his wig and set it on fire more than anybody else on this planet. But if we fuck with it right now, sorry for the language, not so sorry, um, then, you know, if he go, we need to get him in jail. And right now, finally, finally, it's being investigated properly. And I know this for a fact because I'm dealing with it every day. So, you know, I know that there's people in the comments that are like, 
trying to dox Davi, putting his address up. Don't do that. Stop it. I will smack the shit out of you. Stop it. We do not, we do not like that. Do not, do not beat him down. <laughs> I get where your heart, I get where your heart is and I totally feel you. You're, you guys are parents, I get it. I agree with you. I would love to knock the guy out, but we can't do that. And we also don't want him to come back at you guys and be like, oh, well, ICP told, you know, the, the juggalos to go, you know, beat me up. We don't want that to happen either. That's like a legal issue. Hey, our yeah. life is one long lawsuit, man. We could take it. Oh, I get you. I get you. I, don't want, I get you, man. But you know, we don't want any other one long reason. lawsuit. We don't. We also just don't. We also don't want them to, you know, find a way to put that on us or anything like that. We just don't like that. I mean, if you see him out on the street, you can yell the word pedophile at him. I don't care if you happen to have a two-liter bottle of Fago. You can shake it up and spray it all over him. I don't care about that. Just don't like knock him out. Like, don't break his teeth or anything like that. Can we smack his wig off. You can if you can grab it off and run away. But, yeah, and run. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. I, I would run. I just smack it off and just hold it in front of his face. Yeah, but just don't beat his ass. Like, don't send him well, to the I hospital. I think sometimes <laughs> it's it's you know when you see high profile people from a certain industry, in this case obviously the music industry, speak out, rally energy for the right purpose. There's nothing but good that's going to come out of it, and that's why I was so excited to have you guys on tonight to talk about this with Mel, because I think, I think when more people speak out, whether it's this movement to, you know, me too, or black lives matter, or, you know, whatever is going on in society. And there's tons going on here. You know, it's the most active period I can remember in 40 years of being a reporter, you know, this is the kind of activism that leads to change. And, and I really applaud you guys for, taking time out of your evening and you know, away from your families and music and the hundred of things you got going on to, to be here. And oh, talk we, we appreciate what, you what, having what, us on the show. What really makes this situation different, though, is this isn't something we just learned about. No. This is 10 years old. This is 12 years old. People, I mean, whoo. I mean, like, how long are we waiting? You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. Okay, like, really? It took the FBI that long? The FBI was on us. <laughs> they call us a gang. You know what I mean? They call Douglas a gang like that. Like, wait, this guy is, you know, the, I know of a gargoyle. You want to see a real gargoyle? I'll take it out of Florida and show you one. It, it's a real winged demon. You know what I mean? And it's just chilling, living amongst the people. Sure, it's eating their children. But it's, you know, we haven't done anything about it yet. You know what I'm saying? We're getting it together. It's like, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Like, how long are we going to wait? It's been a decade. Chris, it's been a decade. I know. Like, this is how long? How do you think I do shows on it every every Wednesday night? It's it's this, Onision, uh, the the pandemic, and, and, and George Floyd. That's been my existence. Well, like, you know, it's here. like the stories about in the 1600s when, when like, there would be, like, a, a pedophile in a village. And the pedophile was powerful, though. And he, you know, paid the police, and they would leave him alone. But all the villagers' children would be getting pedophiled. What would the villagers eventually do? Well, I they get fucking you, get the torches and burn them down. Well, well, we don't yes, want them to burn his we house. Don't down, want we don't want that. No. <laughs> wait, wait, here's the thing. The energy is good. Go ahead, Mel. Yeah, let me explain it in a way that's a little bit easier to understand, I guess. So basically, for for y'all and for everybody watching and everything like that. The thing is with us is that we want him arrested and in jail because that's our justice. Like if he kills himself, if he gets killed, even if it's that's by a, like that, a car. It's him getting out of it very easily. Yeah, that's what I don't want him to do too. Out. I don't want him to kill himself. No. We don't, I, I know we don't want that. I think he's going to, I got a good feeling. we don't want to kill him either. We want him to just be in prison. I don't want him to die either. To, yeah, if something, if somebody like, you know, eventually does something to him in prison, whatever. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's, that's yeah, like, thank it you. doesn't, that's, I don't that's care. Karma. That's I, I yeah. don't want him to die. Let me make that clear. I'm, I don't want him to die at all. No, it, I, I, it, I, just I by chance, there's no, there's no hell. That would be way too easy yeah. of, of him I mean, getting off. Pretty much. You know, if, like, if it's, I know it's hard to ignore something like this if you see it out in public. I mean, I know I'm going to call him an it. Um, I mean, somebody told me recently that they saw him at Walmart and they just, like, ran away. Um, but, you know, it's like, it's, I was mostly joking about, like, you know, snatching his weave. I mean, I probably would. But I don't think anyone should even address him. I think you should oh. primarily just ignore him as much as you can. I know it's really hard, but better safe than sorry and i really just don't want i don't want anybody else getting in any trouble no mal we gotta meet in the middle okay we gotta meet in the middle 
You're saying I'm going to give there. you that. I'm Go gonna ahead. give you that. We're not gonna beat them up, all right? We're not gonna hurt them. Come on, okay. don't take away the snatch in the wig. That's but, cool. Okay, but, but what is so what is? But what this? We can snatch is, the wig and run. Like just be fast, you know. Exactly. Be fast. But what this? And does, you already know you because you have a COVID mask on, so you're good. <laughs> exactly. It closes. It closes the the noose on him in a way uh, that puts pressure on everybody involved to seek justice. Look, That's the, right. Epstein, the Epstein thing was a travesty, that plea deal he cut, you know, oh, in 2000, 2008. But because the Miami Herald stayed on it and stayed on it and stayed on it because brave, courageous victims uh, in that case, just like Mal came forward and so many others on this show, and because people who had power and influence like you guys came forward and talked about it and raised awareness, that's how finally – this closes in on him, and 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 this is one of the ways I think to get justice. And and, and again, I applaud you guys for being on and, and and you know rallying the troops. We do not want vigilantism, of course, and we know that that's not what you're calling for here. But just to be double, triple clear, um, yeah. But it is. It's it's awareness. It's pressure, and. It's getting the word out there that this guy, as you guys have said, as I have said, has been getting away with this for 10 years in the United States and in Europe. And it's time that it comes to an end. Mal, yeah, final no thoughts doubt. for you tonight while we've got uh, these guys with a Shaggy and Jay. All right. So, um, yeah, so I, I want to reiterate again. Um, obviously, I thank you guys so much for speaking out, um, not only on this show, but even but on the social media posts. Obviously, that was a big deal. And it really did help. Again, I've said earlier, like people are coming forward from that post. So, um, you know, the whole reason that, you know, we're doing all this now is basically because of that. And I really hope that this, um, you know, this interview situation and the social media posts inspires more people with large platforms like yourselves to come forward and say something and they don't have to know Dobby personally obviously you guys you know don't um but it really helps and you never know who can be you know following that person but not following Chris Hansen or me or whomever else that was you know affected by him and it inspires them to come forward and it also helps to you know keep people away from him um so with that being said um i always say this every time i'm on the show um if you um are watching this and if you are a survivor of dobby vanity if he sexually assaulted you um at all but specifically when you're underage but at any time in your life if he did this to you please feel free to get in touch with myself and Ashley Lilly. Uh, Ashley was taking a break for, for, a, for a while from that, but she's back to answering messages. Um, I think Chris is going to link our social media handles Absolutely. in yep. here. We'll yep. have it all um, up on the channel, and we'll, we'll, I'll put them out on my social media tomorrow too so we have that. And, and, uh, yeah, you can, you can hit us up um, anytime, either one of us on Instagram or Twitter, um, and we would love to help you uh, get justice. And again, thank you. Uh, both of you guys for coming on and and helping uh, bring more awareness to the case. Jay, course, Shaggy, uh, I can't thank you enough for coming on and, and uh, expressing your uh, energy here. I, I do have one question for you before I let you go off topic. What was going through your mind when you wrote the To Catch a Predator song? <laughs> That's this man. He wrote it. You, you know, Chris, Chris Hansen, brother. I like to say your full name because you're so awesome. Um, Every time we address, you're gonna be like, "Hey, Chris Hansen." First, I want to say, you know, just off the, just to close up our opinions on the whole uh, Davy uh, Davy um, vanity thing. You know, I mean, history will tell you when Chris Hansen's on your ass, you're done. I mean. Yeah, the, the forget about it. If you're on the case, you, He's done. you might as well just check into jail. It's a wrap. Right it's already a wrap. It's just I'm just so excited to hear about when. And no, we don't want any juggalos beating them up. It's, it's mostly because I don't want any juggalos getting arrested and going to jail and having to be in jail because of that. Right. That's, you know? Yeah, we don't want that's, that. That's it's, the important point. Keep however, I will while, while I'll style and say I'm totally condone snatching his wig and running. That to me is awesome. Okay, having said that, um, uh, when we wrote To Catch a Predator, it was an honor, and, and, and it was a, it was a, like, what do we call it, like a tribute 
Yeah. To you, Mr. 100%. Hanson. Hundred percent. You're the man. You're the man. We, we, man. We have a line in a song that says, "Chris Hansen is a juggalo, but he don't know it." You know what I mean? Because we know, we know you're a juggalo. We know you have all the qualities of a juggalo. I'm, I'm honored and, and, to be a juggalo. I really am. And, and we're huge fans. It's so cool to um to um um be, be here on the on, on the show. And, and, and you know what, man? I can't tell you how much I enjoy. That's my that's my my Joe Bruce time. That's that my, my real name. That's that's my time. I like to watch these episodes. I like to, I like to listen to these testimonies. I like to, um, you know, you're my escape from a lot of pressure and a lot of things like that. And I want to thank you for that, for that sincerely. You know, well, you, you, guys guys are my, great... you guys are your music is my escape sometimes uh, from what I do. <laughs> when are we going to see a hatchet man tattoo on your neck? <laughs> well, you never know. You never know. <laughs> I might do that, but I will check in on you when I'm in Michigan, which I am frequently, as you guys know. So, oh yeah. Uh, We'll get it together, but thank you. Any last words, Jay, Jay, and, and, uh, Joseph and uh, Joseph? Mal, Mal Levy. Um, am I pronouncing the last name right? Yeah, Mal, 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 yeah, Mal Levy. Yeah. Um, it's awesome what you're doing. You uh -huh. know, yeah, it, it really, really is. Great. You're taking it. You're great. taking the, the bull by the horns. You know what I'm saying? You, you you are a survivor, but also you're coming back. You know what I'm saying? You're like you, you didn't just survive and tell your story. You took it further. You took it a step further, and you're swinging back. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's and also awesome. really admirable, man. For yeah, real. for real, for real. A lot so, of people so are too shout out to, to you. It. Much love to you for that. You know what I mean? And let's guys, get this guy in jail, man. Yeah, man. This then we need to like, like have a, a party or something. You know what I mean? Oh, well, we like, are we need going to, to have a party for sure. Yeah, like y'all, y'all are we'll, playing it. Yeah. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> Here we go. Awesome. Hang on. Alexa, play <laughs> "To Catch a Predator" by Insane Clown Posse. Chris, give the people what they want. I told you this already. Give give the people what they want. You're gonna get flagged by YouTube. We gotta oh, yeah, have a party. Comes. All right. Whoop whoop. <laughs> whoop whoop. Chris Hansen said whoop whoop. Yeah. That's the best thing I've ever heard. Stay tuned for the party, everybody. It's going down. It's going down. Thanks, guys, I'll be in touch with you guys soon. Mal, as always, thank you very much for being a part of the effort. You guys have a wonderful evening. Thanks for having a seat with me on this show. I'll chat with you soon. Woo -woo. All right. Woo woo. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, everybody. That was tremendous. What a great group of guys. And Mal, as always, a pleasure to have on the show. We will continue the Dobby Vanity investigation. We have guests already lined up for next week. We'll have more on Onision and um, some very interesting developments in the field of human trafficking. You may have heard about that Wayfarer story. We've been digging into that, so we'll have details on that. You take care. Have a wonderful night from New York City, and I will see you next week, if not before. Stay safe, stay healthy, and remember, I'll be watching.